Now with the descending energy ball balance, you remember back when we, we first did our classes, we did we I threw everybody a ball and we all bounced them on our table to see what the rate of descent, or not the rate of descent, but how many bounces we get out of our balls. And we had a range, some people, you know, with the ping pong balls, some of those might have bounced like 25, 30 times. And then other people had uh, softer balls uh, that absorbed the energy once they hit the, the surface. And so they didn't bounce quite as much. And some people had seven bounces. Some people had three bounces. That one special ball that I had that was the, uh, the hockey ball uh, with a lead weight inside of it, I dropped it and it didn't bounce at all. So different types of balls will have different types of weights to them and, and structure, uh, meaning what they're made out of which will affect it the way they act. And this is something that we have to be concerned with when we're dealing with our cartoon characters later on as well. You're going to be the one that's going to design your cartoon character and come up with the look of them. So a tall, thin character is going to act and move differently than a short, little, fat character. Or a character that has, you know, like a penguin type character with no legs will act differently than a stork type of a character. And these are all things that we need to take into consideration as we're doing our animation. So with this assignment, we're going to jump into the, the new principle, which is called descending energy, meaning that everything loses energy as it moves or eventually comes to a stop. And it can't just abruptly come to a stop. So you can't have a character walking in and then just all of a sudden, clunk, he stops, and everything stops at the same time. We have to incorporate overlapping a action as well as descending energy to it. So what ends up happening is you have a character walks in this way, and what happens is their bottom stops, their hips and, and or their actually their feet will stop on the surface, but their hips will continue forward, their upper torso will continue forward, and then their hips here will move back in the opposite direction, their head will catch up, and then they'll swivel to a stop. So you get this type of a, a recovery. All right? The same thing is true with the bouncing ball. When we bring our bouncing ball in from the side over here, Okay. Uh, when we bring our bouncing ball in from the side over here, it's going to come in, bounce, and then each bounce is subsequently going to lose energy and it's going to lose, a, lose it right to the very end where it'll roll to a stop. So just as we did with our perpetual bouncing ball, remember we had our line of action which was running through the center here. We don't have a center line path of action, but we do have a path of action that the ball is going to follow. So essentially we're going to start our ball over here at the side, approximately one inch from the top of your sheet of paper, and you can just draw in a little semicircle. And this, this ball can be roughly about the size of a loony, a toonie, somewhere in there. Don't make it too small. Don't make it the size of a penny or a pea. Since they're discontinuing the penny, there's no point in using pennies anymore, right? So we'll make it a, about the size of a loony or toonie. So we're just gonna stick it on the very edge of our field right here. And this is just for reference as to where we're beginning our animation from. So our ball is going to come in here and it's as though we're going to just sort of toss the ball in and it's going to come in this way so we've got energy that's going this way from our toss but we also have gravity taking over which is pulling the ball down. So therefore the ball is not going to come in like this on a straight line from our toss and then just suddenly drop straight down. It's going to have an arcing action to it. So the ball is going to arc across like this and then come to a point where it's going to hit the ground. So we're just going to give an artificial line across here that's going to indicate the surface or the contact point for the, the ball. So we can just take a sheet of paper here and just line it up. If you've got a ruler you can use that as well. We'll just draw a line across like that just to indicate this is where the, the ground is. So our ball is going to enter in here, and if we were to expand this out, if I was just to take another sheet of paper here and just stick it on the side, on my pegs, it would be as though, let me just slide my peg bar over, it would be as though the ball coming in here was reaching its high point right here, and if we had another bounce on it, the bounce would be coming down on this side here. So we've got this elliptical shape it's right in here so if we just continue this around to the other side here we create an ellipse I heard that uh, Omar is giving guys grief about your ellipses I have some students over at Humber and we're I'm teaching them layout as well and uh, we're dealing with ellipses as well so uh, <laughs> it's 
something that you have to know because it not only applies to your perspective anytime you're drawing something cylindrical, but it also applies to paths of action in, in that we're making characters move from one point to another. So we need to get that nice, smooth, curving type of a line. So this would be the path of action. Essentially, it's just continuing out from this side as though we brought the ball bouncing in here and then it bounces over to this point here. So our path of action is just following that elliptical shape. So this is going to be our contact point down here. Now the next bounce that we're going to have is also going to have a height to it, but it's going to be less than the height of our first ball. So we're going to take it to maybe about three quarters the height. So if we take our overall height right here and we subdivide it in half and then subdivide that in half, that'll give our, us our three quarter height, which is approximately around there. Now the other thing we also have to consider is the fact that this is losing energy not only this way, in its up and down action, but it's also losing energy in its forward action in that it's moving across the page. So if I put this back on here, we can see the width of this overall arc here. That's the distance that it's traveling on the ground. What we're going to do on this next one is we're going to basically half that. So we're going to take the center distance there and shift it over and use that as our guide. So we've got more descent going this way. It's losing more energy this way than it is up and down this way but that will eventually catch up. So we have our height and we have our distance that we're traveling horizontally. So now we have to connect these together with an arc, which we find the center line between those two points there. That'll be the apex of the arc. Or if you turned it sideways like this, that would be the major axis line through your ellipse. This is the minor axis line through here. We just place our arc like this. And then we're going to take our next bounce, and this one we're going to make about mm, two thirds the height. So if our height is here, we're going to subdivide that into three, and our next height is going to be down like this, so we're losing more energy. And this one, again, we're going to take it about half the distance on that one, about there, so our height here, so an idea, just a little arc there. The next one we're going to make it half and half, so half the distance here, be to about there, and half the height. So this is just going to be a little tiny bounce here, and then we'll add on one tiny little one, just a little tiny bounce right there is about one-third the height. It's just a little boink there on the end. And then what's going to happen is it's still an up and down bounce and we still have traveling across here. We're then going to let it roll across the ground until it comes to a stop. And we can just arbitrarily put a point there. We can modify this later on. So this is essentially planning out where the ball is moving from and to at each point in the overall action, where it ends up at the very end. So in a very broad sense, our ball, our first key is up here at the start point, and our final key is back over here at the end point. So now what we do is we can start to plan out where our primary keys are going to be. These are our two beginning and end keys where it starts and stops. Yep. Uh, the second distance, the bottom distance. This one here? Yes. Exactly the same repetition. Yeah, it's about half the distance of the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so the third one is half of second? Yeah, this one is about half of that one. Oh. Okay, and then half and half. Or about the same, actually, a little bit less. Okay, so the distances get smaller as they move across, and the height gets smaller. So you can see there's like an arc that comes across here. It indicates the descent of energy. So now what we want to do is we want to find our high and low points, which are going to be our primary keys. This is our first primary key up here. This would be considered drawing number one. All right, so if you want to just put a little number one beside it. This is just going to be our planning sheet. Right? Figure out where everything is. Then this is going to be our next key down here. Right? So the other thing we could call this is A as our first key. 
This is going to be B down here. Then we're going to go up to our high point over here, which is C. Then down to our low point over here, which is D. And back up to a high point over here. E, low point, F, high point, G, low point, H, high point here, I, low point, J, and then it rolls to K. So those are our overall keys. We're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 keys overall. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out where our in-betweens are going to go and what our basic timing is going to be on this. So it's basically the same thing that we did on our perpetual ball bounce. We're going to follow the same formula for where the balls go as far as the overall timing goes. So again, as a general rule, and this is going to be flexible and broken as we get into second semester with more of the character stuff, our first in between between two keys is always a halfway point. So between this high point here and this low point down here, we find our halfway point on this arc. Half the distance in between. And we'll deal with each of these separately. So on our first one, you'll remember with the ball bounce, we had our halfway point and then the energy from the high point, it began to speed up as gravity takes over the ball, right? It gets to its high point up here and then it begins to speed up. So we would need a gradual speed up here. So by putting in one halfway in between between those two points or a quarter of the overall distance, it automatically creates a slow in to the action of the, the ball moving down because the distance from here to here is equal and then this is half the distance so that means that it's speeding up as it comes down over those one two three four drawings and reaches its full speed here so we want to continue that slow in here with a halfway in between here so now we have drawing number one two three four five you remember though that on our perpetual ball bounce this was drawing number what what was the low point Seven, right? So if we just put beside B a seven, we need to fill in our drawings here. So if this is one, two, three, four, we need a five and a six. We'll put one up here as a slow in. So now it's easing into that action. And then remember we had favor. the favor down at the bottom here, right? So we had that favor. We'll put an F on the side there. So now we can number our drawings. This will be number two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we knew it was number seven because we're using the exact same timing from the perpetual ball bounce. All right. So we can just drop that number in. In later instances when you're doing animation where you don't necessarily know what the timing is, then we're going to default to this ABC process where we just drop the letters in. And then later on, once we do our pencil check and test the timing on it, then we can play around with the, the spacing, the number of drawings that we're going to put into it, and then we can finally decide, okay, this needs four in-betweens or three in-betweens or 12 in-betweens, and then that will dictate what the next number of the next key is. So we never really worry about the numbers at the very beginning. In this case here, I'm showing it to you because we're planning it all out because it's a very simple action. But once we get into the character stuff, it's no longer simple. It's more complicated, and we can't necessarily do what we're doing here. So it's just to give you a sense of space and time. So we've got our downward action here. Now we're going to do our upper action going up into this position here. So we're, again, we're going to use the same timing that we had before, where between our 7 and our high point here, we're going to drop a halfway in. And then another quarter up here, because we're easing out of the action. So this one eases in to this part here. And then from here, we're going to ease out at the high point. So we drop another in between there and another in between there. And you'll remember that our high point on our perpetual ball bounce was drawing number one, right? Went back to number one. So therefore, this would be 11, 10, 9, 8 to 7, right? And remember, we put in a 7A before. Right, which was the halfway point between these two points here. But since we're planning it out at this point, we know ahead of time that we are going to drop that in between in there anyways. We'll drop it in there, but we're not going to call it 7A. We're going to call it 8. Right? So this one now becomes 8. 9 is the breakdown there. We'll put a little 
underlined between our un, under our breakdown drawings, which was five and nine. Those are the halfway points. And this one's 10, 11, 12, and the high point on C is now 13. And that's our key position at the high point. We do the same thing on the way down that we did on this side over here. We find our halfway point, and then we do our quarter, eighth, and sixteenth. So we want to mirror what we're doing on the top side over here, on the back side, because right? the energy that's being expended over here would be basically the same. You wouldn't take out two of these drawings here and go immediately to this quarter position because what that means is that it's going slower as it gets to the top and all of a sudden it speeds up faster than it went up. It means that something's causing it to go faster in here and we don't want that. So we want basically the exact same timing on the opposite side so it looks symmetrical in its overall action. Right? So then we can do the same thing, put the favor down here on this side. So now our numbering is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 down here, 18 is the favor, and D becomes 19, which is the next key position. Now you remember at the very beginning I asked you to bring in 20 sheets of paper. That doesn't mean that we're only doing up to 19 and then the halfway position here. We're not just going to do all those drawings there. We're doing the primary keys on the high and low points, and then we're going to go in and do our breakdowns. And then once we've got those done, then you'll go away and you'll finish up all your in-betweens from that point on, on your own. So now, we're going back up to our high point on the next bounce, so we're going to drop in a halfway in-between. And here's where we have to start to modify our, our timing, because all of a sudden, our distance here is now basically half of what we had before. So we need to cut out some drawings so it doesn't look like it's going too slow. So we're going to drop another halfway in between in here, which is a quarter, and one more in here, but we're not putting in that extra one. So we're taking one drawing out of here, and we're not going to put that halfway in here from the low point, because basically the height of it, if you look across, it's the same height as number eight over there. Right? So if we put another one in here, that'll cause this part here to slow down too much. And we want it to go basically the same speed as it is over here, just easing up into the high point. So this will become come 20 here, 21, 22, and the high point is now 23. That's our key at the high point. So then we echo the timing on the opposite side as well, from the high point to the low point, halfway in between. Again, that's sort of the standard that we're going to stick with for now. Then a quarter, and then an eighth. So we're easing in, or easing out of this part here, and then easing into the down part over here. So this is 24, 25, 26, and then our low point down here is going to be 27. So we're taking the favor out now and making it just hit the bottom. So F is now 27. 